Alrighty, folks, we are here for another exciting edition of online learning, and we're going to be learning about the unit circle. Uh, if you know any older humans, maybe brothers, sisters, friends, uh, they will know about the unit circle because you learn it here in Algebra 2, and you use it in pre-calc, and you use it in calculus, so it's going to be one of those things that you want to try to get pretty comfortable with. It's exactly that. It's a circle with a radius of one unit. So all the way around this circle, anything that goes all the way to the edge is one unit. So if you were making this unit circle on graph paper and this was the origin, you would the entire thing would be taking place between this point, which would have the coordinates one, zero, one up the y-axis, so that would have the coordinates zero, one, one to the left on the x-axis, so that would have the coordinates negative one, zero, and at the bottom, you would be at zero, negative one. So this is day one. We're going to use three days to talk about the unit circle, and our main focus today is going to be radians and degrees and we're going to start talking about what coordinates would go where on this unit circle as well eventually. And for that, we're going to use the um, special triangles. So we might save that fun for day two. When you see the unit circle, you have these 90 degree marks always marked. So those are familiar to us. 90 degree at the top, 180 over here, 270 at the bottom. And then this is zero degrees, but it is also 360 degrees once you make it all the way around. Each quadrant, as you can see, and just to refresh your memory, this is quadrant one, two, three, four. We kind of want to know that and be um, aware of that again. And we want to divide each one into three parts, but you'll notice they're not equal parts. And so we want to kind of figure out where are those parts coming from. Well, this first line that I hit as I'm going up is going to be my 30 degree mark. And see, this is obviously a much smaller space. If I'm doing it evenly, this is 30. This is my next 30. So that's going to be 60. And then my next 30 would land me at 90. 30 more would put me at 120. I'm kind of ignoring these middle marks for right now, to be honest. Coming down here, that same amount would be 30 more, so 150. 30 more puts me at 180. 30 more puts me at 210. 30 more puts me at 240. And then again, another 30's got me at 270. 30 more puts this at 300. And then the last, well, I shouldn't say the last, but the next group of 30 puts me at 330. And then the last group, of 30 puts me all the way around at 360. So those are going to be um, our 30 degree marks. What we also want to do is figure out what are those middle marks? Well, halfway between um, the 30 and the 60 is going to be a space of 15 degrees. And so here, 15 degrees between these, kind of an even split, is going to make this a 45. Or another way to think about that is that it's halfway to the 90. So this is going to be 45 past that. So 135. This is going to be 45 past 180. So if I add 45 to that, I end at 225. So either you can be adding that 45 or you can be looking at it as the halfway mark in between these two. So it's 15 degrees to here, 15 degrees to there. Same thing here. If this is 270 and I add 45, I'll be over here at 315 or I could say that's got to be 15 degrees from each of these. So whatever makes the most sense to you. So your goal on day one is going to be to be able to fill the unit circle in relatively quickly so that you're not spending a bunch of time trying to get it filled in because ultimately we're going to be use it to re we're going to be using it to 
refer to and look for parts and look for um, elements of trig. So we want to be able to know where to look and get there quickly and be sort of familiar. Um, now, the real challenge is that we're going to also be doing that in radians. And this is going to be something you want to practice. And you're going to see that we're going to ask you to fill this in almost daily because that repetition is where you're going to learn what you're doing. You do not want to be converting every time, converting, converting, using your conversion factor. You want to be able to just kind of start seeing some patterns that make it easier to fill in. I went around and filled in all the 30 degree marks because that was easy for me. And then really that only left me with these four middle marks to fill in. And so that was pretty easy. I'm actually going to go about that in the same way for radians. Now, I'm going to put some scratch paper over here so that I can show you what I'm doing. What I do is I think, okay, this first mark, 30 degrees, 30 degrees in radians is pi over 6. So I'm going to count, instead of counting in groups of 30 degrees, I'm going to count in groups of pi over 6. And I'm only doing these main marks. So I'm starting at 0 because obviously that's still 0 radians. This first one is going to be equal to pi over 6. Now I'm still skipping these middle marks for now. Um, keep in mind that pi is the same as 180 in degrees. So if you think of it that way, 180 divided by 6 would indeed be the 30 degrees. But this is what I'm counting by. So at this next mark, at 60 degrees, I'd be at 2 pi 6 because I'm counting in chunks of pi over 6 but that reduces to pi over three. So we wanna start getting used to the fact that 60 degrees on our unit circle is the same as pi thirds radians. Move that quadrant mark out of your way. Then if I went 30 degrees more, I'd be here at 90, but at 90, I'm now at three pi over six because I'm just counting one pi over six, two pi over six reduced. Three pi over six would reduce to pi halves, which is exactly what that is. That's going to be pi halves radians at the top. The next one would be at my 120 mark, and now I'm counting to four pi over six, but that reduces to two pi thirds. So this 120 degrees is the same as a two pi thirds radian location. So all I'm doing is putting in the equivalent marks using radians. And I'm doing all the 30 degree marks so that I can count by pi sixes. If I was at four pi over six here, my next one would be five pi over six, and that one doesn't reduce. My next one would be six pi over six, but at 180, six pi over six would just reduce down to be pi which we should already have expected because 180 degrees is pi. That's our entire conversion factor. Okay, if I keep going, this next one would be 7 pi over 6, and that does not reduce. My next 30 mark, because remember I'm skipping the middle ones, my next 30 mark would be 8 pi over 6, but 8 pi over 6 down here at 240 is going to reduce to 4 pi over 3. So 240 in degrees is the same location as 4 pi thirds in radians. At the bottom of the circle, I'm going to be at my 270 mark. And 270, I counted up to where was I? 8. So now I'm at 9 pi over 6. Again, reducing that, I'm going to be at 3 pi halves. So the bottom of my circle is going to be 3 pi halves radians or 270 degrees. After 9 would obviously come 10. So at my 300 degree mark, I'm at 10 pi over 6, which reduces to 5 pi thirds. So that's right here, 5 pi thirds. Then I'd be at 11 pi thirds. And that, excuse me, 11 pi over 6, which doesn't reduce. Because remember, I'm counting all the way around in terms of 6s. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, reduced. 3 pi over 6, reduced. 
4 pi over 6 reduced, 5 pi over 6 doesn't reduce, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. So if you get in the habit of kind of practicing and you can reduce them in your head, then it's going to go pretty quickly, only leaving you four spots left to fill in. Now, 45 degrees, if the top of the circle is pi halves, 45 degrees is halfway to that. So half of pi halves would be a pi over 4. Same thing here. You're halfway between half pi and full pi, so that makes this 3 pi fourths or 3 quarters of pi. Here, again, you're basically going odds. You have 1 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, so this one is going to be 5 pi over 4, because if you're counting in the middles, this would have been 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4 reduces, 3 pi over 4 stays that, 4 pi over 4 would reduce, and this would be 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4 already reduces, and then my next would be 7 pi over 4. So that's a lot, but you want to just kind of start getting used to the pattern, seeing how you can make your way around there, and you want to practice. We're going to save the coordinates for another day. You should have one of these available on Schoology. If you have a printer, that's super awesome. If not, it'll just be a little bit trickier to draw out for yourself. I'm going to back this off a little so you can see the whole thing. And what you want to try to practice is getting pretty good at being able to just buzz around and fill in the parts. All we're doing right now are radians and degrees. So I like to do degrees first because I'm more comfortable with it. So I would start off zero degrees. Then this would be 30 degrees, 60, 90, 120. I'm going around doing all my 30s plus 30 plus 30, plus 30, again, and I just keep going. And you want to get to the point where you're pretty confident, you're pretty quick, so that later on you can find your way around. Because you're going to be asked to go to these spots on the unit circle and find things. So if it takes you forever to get to that spot, then it's just going to make your homework that much longer and harder to do. So we want to start figuring out where those locations are. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the radians for those same spots, and I'm going to start doing it in my head. I know that these are going to be pi over 6s, so 1 pi over 6 doesn't reduce. 2 pi over 6 does. 3 pi over 6 does. 4 pi over 6 reduces, 5 pi over 6 doesn't, 6 pi over 6 reduces, 7 pi over 6 doesn't, 8 pi over 6 reduces to 4 pi thirds, 9 pi over 6 reduces to 3 pi halves, 10 pi over 6 reduces to 5 pi thirds, and 11 pi over 6 doesn't reduce. All the way around, remember, is 2 pi. Put it in there with the others. Okay, so I'm kind of starting to figure that out. Count around by 30s, then count around by pi over 6s. Now I'm going to do all my middle marks. My middle marks in degrees were 45 from each side or top or bottom. So 45 up is 45. 45 more, I'm already done with that. 45 more puts me at, keep in mind there are also 15 in between each of these. So whatever way makes the most sense to you. 45 more, I'm here. 45 more would be 225. And again, that's 15 away from each of the neighbors. Then 45 puts me at the bottom. 45 more puts me at 315, which is 15 away from each of the neighbors, and I'm done. For radians, 
those are like this, like I said before, half of a half makes this one pi over four. Halfway between a half and a whole is going to be three pi fourths. Keep going with the odds. Five pi fourths and seven pi fourths. So for day one, what you want to be able to do is go around and not have it take your whole entire life and be able to fill in your degree markings and then your radian markings so that when you're done, you have a finished product that looks like this lovely thing. I will have a filled in one online for you, but you want to be able to kind of write that out yourself and understand the patterns that you see so it'll make your life easier. So I know this was super exciting for you. Welcome back to online learning. Um, we will save the coordinates for later so you have something fun to look forward to. Hope you're doing well and you know I miss you. Bye guys.